So the parents of the children in our program are here and they're all in elementary school. Okay, so I'm talking to everybody who's not here. I thought everybody uh, didn't come last week because there was a hurricane coming. But if y'all watching this, um, you need to email me and Jacques that you're watching it so that we know to keep doing it because there's only a few folks here right now and if this ain't working, then we got to do something different. Amen? Not that it ain't valuable or that I don't appreciate y'all being here, but you could be doing something else. So anyway, so we're going to give this to you. So if, let me say it again. If you watch this online, email me and Jacques that you saw this online. Don't go tell nobody email them either. We've got to make sure because I, I want them to have seen it right now to email us. Okay. So uh, but what we've been talking about each time we have these meetings is the importance of you meeting at home. You doing something. If it, even if you don't do the actual lesson, okay? We want you to do the lessons that, that we put on the website. But if you can't, because I got five kids, and my oldest one is eight years old, and they go down from eight. My youngest one will be three uh, this December. So I got eight to three. And so I know, you, you know, I, I couldn't do this program at home with five kids and, and expect to have a, a eight-year-old lesson and then, okay, now I'm finished with you. Now we're going to do a, uh, who's next, seven-year-old? You know, I, we're going to do that in order. So if, if you know, if you just got four kids, three kids, it don't matter. You, you got one? Okay, it don't matter. I got five, you got two, three, two, one, three. It don't matter. Kids is kids and it's hard to juggle, okay? I understand. So, however many kids you got, it's hard to juggle. I get it. But it's important that you just do something, okay? Now, especially during Advent, okay? We have a rich Catholic tradition, like Jacques said, in the season of Advent. So, even if it's as simple as getting a wreath, and it doesn't even have to be a full-on Advent wreath. You could just get a strip of garland or, or even a green piece of paper and put four candles on it. You can get, a, you know, three purple candles and one rose-colored not pink, one rose-colored candle at Walmart for four dollars. You know, the little dollar candle you can get. Even if it's as simple as getting four candles and in that first week light a candle and say, hey, we're in Advent, so this is, this is what we do during Advent, and maybe a five-second prayer. Anything you do is, is a step in the right direction because what you do is of utmost importance. Can't say that enough. Would, would Jacques, what I, me and Jacques do and the volunteers do is an aid to what you do. It's a supplement to what you do at home. So you do something, all right? We've provided you with way more than you could ever do, but that's so you don't run out. That's, it's better to have too much and not get to it than to say, oh, man, that's it. Now I don't know what to do, right? So that's, that's what we want you to do. That's what we want you to do. Um, our scripture for tonight that we're going to just briefly reflect on is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Uh, but but I want to, I'm just thinking I want to pre, I want to go a little further backwards. So we go to chapter 3 and we're going to do verse 14 until and we get to 20. So here we go. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 and following says, For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. So he's talking about all of us families, the ones in heaven and on earth. We kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you in accord with the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the power through his spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Pause. We want you, and more, most importantly, this program exists for your children, not, not for you, but for your children, because we want you and them to be strengthened with power through the Holy Spirit in the inner self. That's where our strength comes from, and that's how we want to raise our children, That's how, especially those of us who are in junior high school and have junior high children. We want to raise them to be strong 
in there in ourself. What I'm saying is we're focusing on, by what you do at home, you're focusing on the inner self, the strength that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit in their inner self. So that way, as they grow up, they're not affected inside by what happens outside. Does that make sense? Uh, Because of the way that we were raised, this whole coronavirus pandemic thing, we handle it on the inside as best we can as we were raised to handle things on the inside. Does that make sense? It's kind of freaky to think about it like that now, but that's you're raising your kids and what you do for them in a spiritual world is, is how they're going to grow up and handle things with strength on the inside. So let me go further. We want you to be strengthened with the riches of his glory through the power of his spirit in the inner self and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones, that's, that's all the people in heaven, and, and all the whole body of Christ, that we may be able to comprehend what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with the all of the fullness of God. That's a, that's a lot uh, in your mouth to say. So that Christ can dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, those words, rooted and grounded, you don't, you don't, we don't want our children to, um, to grow up and, and not be grounded especially grounded in what Jesus left us himself so that we may comprehend the height, depth, breadth, length and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. The love that he has for us and for our children, it surpasses even what we can think about. And, it, and, and to teach our children that is very difficult because they're children. It's caught, though. It's caught, not taught. It's caught, not taught. And so they're going to pick up on that from you. To be able to, to respond to a love that surpasses what you can comprehend. Those things that, that we're talking about that they're going to catch from you is, is hard to teach, but it's it's, it's easier to get picked up on. It's easier to catch than it is to, to teach. And that's what they're going to do when, when you sit down and you pray with them. The Spirit of the living God is going to descend onto them. It's going to impart off of you and into their hearts. And that's way easier done when you spend time with them and talk about God than when you send them to catechism class. When you set them on fire... When they learn things at church, it's like the dry wood that continues to burn. When you set your family on fire, everything that happens at church after is like the dry wood that enables it to keep burning. Now, verse 20. Now to him who is able to accomplish far more than we can ask or imagine. He is able to accomplish far more than we are able to ask or imagine by the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Ephesians 3.20. That's what I want you to remember. Ephesians 3.20 tonight. To him who can accomplish far more than we can ask or imagine by the power at work within us. Whatever you can imagine, Jesus can accomplish far more than that. I can imagine this building being completely full to listen to Jacques and me talk about um, doing spiritual things with your family for for their benefit, for your children's benefit. I can imagine that this whole church be full. But Jesus can accomplish more than that. And not just because he's Jesus. Because the truth 
says that he can accomplish far more than I can ask for or even imagine by the power at work within me. So what does that mean for you? If you got a hard-headed child, or if you got somebody in your family, you, let's, let's say you got an aunt or an uncle, or, or a grandparent, or a brother, or whoever, you got somebody in your family that's hard-headed. You got somebody in the family that acts out, or that's addicted in, in your extended family. Or, or um, you got a, a, a child who's, or you got a child who is cutting up, who can't stay out the principal's office, and you want them to, to change their mind. You want them to get with it. You want them to, to act right because you want them to succeed. You don't want them to have problems later in life when there's less and less you can do about it. If you can imagine it, and if you can ask for it, Jesus can accomplish more than that. So your family members who left the church, they don't go to church no more, they come in home. All it takes is for you to believe that they can come home. Your kids that's cutting up, they can't get their act together. If you believe it, all it takes is for you to believe that it's possible. And Jesus is telling us that he can accomplish that through the power within you and within me. So whatever it is in regards to your family, we know that it's God's will for everybody to be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's in 2 Timothy. It's God's will for all men to be saved and come to the fullness of truth and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so you know how you get all your prayers answered? You pray for what is God's will to be done. And we know because he says so that it's his will for all men to be saved. So, whatever's going on this Thanksgiving, whoever's not around the table, or whatever's going on this Advent and Christmas, stay true, stay committed to meeting with your kids and your families, and then pray for your extended families and watch them come home. Amen? Let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, we thank you for each person here. We thank you for each family member that is connected to, to us. We ask that you bring healing to family members who have deep wounds. We ask that you light a light in our minds, you pour your love into our hearts, and that you heal what is sick and what is broken in our bodies. Lord, we ask that you remove all disease from our family members in the name of Jesus. We ask that you bring forgiveness, mercy, and reconciliation to those wounds in our family members and in our families that need to be mended in Jesus' name. We cast out any spirit of fear, anxiety, and depression in the name of Jesus. And we plead the blood of Jesus over all of our family members. We plead the blood of Jesus over our own children in Jesus' name. We invoke the protection of our guardian angels, of St. Michael, of St. Raphael, and St. Gabriel. And most of all, we invoke the powerful intercession of your mother as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.